Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Hello, everybody. This is Toby Salgado of Super Agents Live. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Um, This is episode 83. Um, We're fast approaching episode 100. When we get to 100, um, I want to do something interesting. I don't know what it is. Maybe put a panel. Today's episode. Now, look. Here is the deal. I talked to uh, one of my coaching students, and we were just talking about uh, you know all the places where he spends money just to to keep his real estate business alive. And what he said is in kind of an interesting statement. He said, you know, being a real estate agent is sort of like death by subscription, right? Everybody out there is trying to get into your wallet, and you know, for you, it's a confusing landscape. Where do you spend your money? Where are you going to get the most bang for your buck? Now, I have a little bit of a goal that I need to start focusing on a bit more. But that is bring all these vendors, right? The, the vendors who matter, bringing these vendors on and uh, so that uh, they can talk with you. They can share why their product is worthwhile and why you should give them money. So today I have the founder, Howard Tagger of Tiger Leads. Have him come on the show. So today's show, look, here's we talk about leads, right? How to get leads, uh, me, t- uh, Howard and I, we talk about, you know, where you should spend your cash, what to expect with web leads. And, and Howard talks about all the noise in the marketplace. He gives an explanation of why, and this is very, very interesting to me, you know, on Zillow, there's all this outdated data, right? It's old data. Why is that data on there? It's confusing for the consumer. It's confusing for you. Uh, but he, he sort of, he tells why they do it. Um, and there's a reason for it. It made total sense when he explained. So um, we talk about why and how you should stay close to your spro- prospects. Why having an email is simply not enough. We also uh, talk about why you should track everything. Now, this is not new. We, we've talked about this on the show multiple times. <laughs> track everything. You need to know your cost per lead. You need to know all the way down to your cost per sale. We also get into what Howard classifies as the three types of leads out there and which ones will give you the best return. Stay tuned. You are absolutely going to love this one. Now, look, I have to tell you really quick, the audio wasn't that great. Um, most of the times, I, I don't allow people to come on and be on their cell phones. Uh, you know, the, the audio is a little bit rough, but that's fine. Just Just stick with me here. Now, I will say this, even though the audio is not that great, I would really, really urge you to finish this, go all the way through this, because Howard gets better and better as we go along, and, and, um, and it was somewhere near like the 40 minute mark or something, we get into what Howard thinks is, is really great follow-up, how to do that, and we've all heard that, the fortune is in the follow, and he, and he, he tells us something, he tells us a story, but uh, he leads off with F... S-C-P, talking about follow-up. F stands for fast. S stands for service-oriented. C stands for consistent. And P stands for persistent. Persistent. Okay, so he tells us about uh, about uh, one of the guys that he knows uh, gets, gets the uh, phone number so he can text this professional football player. Now, this guy kept following up. He would phone, he would email, he would text, phone, email, text. He had to do it 12 times. And on the 12th time, he got this guy. When he got the guy, the guy bought a multi-million dollar house. They're now searching for a multi-million dollar training facility. And this guy just got a $60 million contract because it's, again, professional football player. He's going to get a bigger house and he's telling all his friends about it. So we get into what really great follow-up looks like. Really quickly, before we get there, hashtag for this show is unpack that idea. Tweet, uh, go ahead and get on Twitter, the old Twitter. Tweet out, use that hashtag, unpack that idea, and you will get new followers. It's a big follow train. And, uh, you know, and look, you're going to meet people, other people that is in the audience, part of the tribe. And uh, it's a good thing. We have a very, very strong community. Uh, the other thing, real quick, um, 
if you don't know, this episode is going to go live July 8th, Monday, July 8th, uh, and uh, a scant 11 days from today, July 8th, um, we're going to have a live event here in San Diego. Now, it's 150 bucks, total bargain, 150 bucks. And uh, and only ten people can come, so it's it's relatively exclusive. And we're going to get into a room, into a hotel room, catered food, and we are going to mastermind all day. Right, everybody gets a chance to get in the hot seat, talk about their business, where they're struggling, where they're winning, and uh, you know, look where you're struggling. We hope to sort of break those barriers so that you can build your business faster. Um, and speaking of Legion, I I, I kind of unveiled this uh, our my last show on Friday. <sighs> I have been building a digital agency, a radio agency. If you want to get on the radio, and it, 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 being on the radio is magic. <clears throat> Combining a service like Tiger Leads or Boomtown or something like that for buyer's leads and then getting using radio for listing leads magical combination. A combination that will get you in any market. You know, it's a it's a it's a 200 transaction a year deal. So so I have the radio guy, I have the platform, I have all the copy. If you but you can't just be anybody. You have to be a top producing agent already in your marketplace with a team. And uh, and we'll talk, you know, send me an email. We'll talk about getting you on the radio. Um, and uh, and look, if you are not there yet, if you don't have a team and you're not already a top producing agent in your marketplace, that's OK. Send me an email. You'll look, you know, we'll we'll you know, we'll work on it together. That's sort of a part of the process here. Um, all right. Hey, let's get to it. Howard Tager of Tiger Leads. Enjoy the show. Hey, Howard, thanks for taking the time out today. I really appreciate it. Hey, no problem, Toby. I'm excited to be here. So, look, you are doing a ton of interesting stuff. I know a little bit about your background with, you know, you, you being, you know, the serial entrepreneur and, and founding and selling Tiger Leads. But, you know, take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and what your with some of the projects that you're working on today. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm definitely that. I'm definitely a serial entrepreneur. I got my start in uh, real estate technology in the beginning of 2007 when I, along with uh, a few other guys, co-founded Tiger Lead Solutions. Um, Just a few guys in a room. uh, We had some incredible technology that had actually been developed uh, and built inside of a brokerage in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So that's kind of the cool thing about you know, the start of Tiger Lead. And one of the key things about Tiger Lead's success is that it wasn't just a bunch of outsiders who said, oh, hey, there's some cool tech we could build for the real estate industry. This entire first iteration of the Tiger Lead system was built over time uh, in a living, breathing, real real estate brokerage laboratory. Uh, And basically, you know, where we are now in 2014, I think is an entirely different place than where we were in 2007. Uh, in a nutshell, what, what Tiger Lead was was sort of the answer to um, a, a lot of the agents were just dipping their toes into digital marketing and just really making that transition from a lot of kind of offline branded type stuff, you know, buying billboard space and putting their, you know, faces on benches and shopping carts, that kind of stuff. And they were just putting their foot in the water into starting to experiment with spending on on digital marketing. And there was all different kinds of technology solutions, but the agents were just overwhelmed because, you know, there was no solution that did everything and each solution was kind of good at one little thing, but then how do you kind of cobble it all together? You know, and I think actually, I think one thing that's the same from 2007 as now is that it's still a very confusing landscape uh, from an agent standpoint about putting that technology together. I think the thing that's changed, well, two things that that have really changed. One is, you know, in 2000 and 2007, 2008, um, I had to, as the only person who was really, you know, selling Tiger League to agents and brokers, I had to really explain the benefits of direct return on investment, digital marketing spend, and how, you know, to the penny, Um, If you were spending money with Tiger League, you could see exactly how much you were making and how much you were spending and your exact return on investment. I used to help create spreadsheets for for folks who were contemplating this. And I would really be in this, you know, conversation or debate about, you know, should they be moving from this sort of all this branded spend that, you know, that they were spending money on where they didn't really ever know what they actually made, you know, and all this stuff to this direct, more direct channel. 
Nowadays, we don't really have to have that debate. I mean, everybody knows, like, yes, I can go out, I can spend money, I can generate leads. That's not really the conversation anymore. Now it's really, okay, you know that you can go spend the money, you know you can get leads, but, but who should you spend it with? What type of leads are you getting? Um, are all Internet leads the same? What are the differences? What type of Internet leads are, are out there? And if I'm going to spend money on, on Internet leads, what should I be prepared for? Um, you know, what's going to lead to success with those leads? What's going to lead to failure with those leads? I mean, the other thing that you and I know is that a good, really depending on the region, a good 50 to 60% of all Internet leads will never get responded to. So there's a whole lot of money that's, that's going down the toilet um, when, it really, you know, when it really shouldn't. So, um, you know, Tiger Lead, you know, we were, we were absolutely one of the pioneers of putting a lot of different bits of technology together. So we basically did three main things. We were, we were like the hired gun, Internet marketing agency for, for agents and brokers. So we basically, you know, we went out there, we spent the money with Google, Yahoo, Bing, and we were generating all of these leads. But we had to, number two, build a great kind of mousetrap, a great place where, where we were going to get all these eyeballs, but we were going to convert a very high percentage of those eyeballs to people who are actually registering. And what that means is they were leaving their phone number, their email, their name, um, and we were actually capturing them as, as a lead. Um, and then third, and most importantly, we had to create a technology or an incubation and cultivation system, a place where our agents and brokers could see these uh, leads coming back over and over again. And I think in a nutshell, what Tiger Lead really pioneered was like a 24-7, big, I call it big brother type system where if somebody registered, if a consumer registered on our system, they registered because they loved the home search experience. And because they loved the home search experience, they would keep coming back to it. Not only would they keep coming back to it, but we would automate the process of reaching out to them, showing them new homes on the market, price-reduced homes, all these things that would bring those consumers back to the home search experience. And the cool thing is that every single time they came back to the home search experience, only our agents knew that they were online looking. It could be 2 in the afternoon. It could be 2 in the evening. Um, our agents real-time saw, hey, this consumer lives in Cleveland but is online at 2 in the morning looking at homes in Santa Barbara. And no other agent in Santa Barbara knew that. Only my agent knew that. And my agent had a huge competitive advantage to then communicate uh, directly with that consumer, help them with their search, give them lots of information, that, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, so that really, in a nutshell, is what Tiger Lead is sort of all about. Now, there are lots of folks who kind of come in and, you know, try to replicate, you know, what we do. And one of the other things that um, I'm starting to really talk about publicly, which no one else has been talking about publicly, is a big difference between 2007 and 2014 is, in, you know, in 2007 and 2014, we're really not selling that many more homes, right? In, you know, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, we roughly sell, what is it? You know, Toby, you know better than me, what, five and a half million, six million homes a year? That number dips up, it dips down, but it never changes, really has not changed significantly. What has changed significantly is the number of, of digital leads or Internet leads that are being produced in the industry. It's, it's scary, it's growing not linearly, it's growing geometrically. And my prediction is that, is that by next year, we'll, we're going to be producing upwards of 40 million um, buyer and seller leads a year. Now, do the math, right? We only have you know, 335 million some odd people in the country, and half of them are renting, and then you've got households filled with four or five people. So if you do the math, what's going on here? most of these leads are no longer exclusive leads. Most of these leads are being sold multiple times. And if you dig into the details, if you look at, let's say, a company like a Zillow, and you really understand what they're doing, they're basically, you know, everyone always asks, like, you know, why, you know, am I seeing a home on Zillow, but it hasn't been on the market for two months or three months? The reason why they're keeping that listing up on that portal is because it's a lead gen lightning rod, right? People see that home, it's no longer on the market, but they see it at home and they fill out a lead form. Interesting. But what happens, yeah, so what happens is that lead form gets filled out. Now guess what happens? They then have to send that lead back to the listing agent, so that's once. 
Then they go sell that lead three more times. So that, that lead has now been sold four times. <laughs> now what we found by doing our research, on average, that consumer might go and fill out a form on like three homes. So guess what? That one consumer just produced 12 internet leads. So I'm really starting to, uh, when I do public speaking, I'm really starting to show this graphically, show what's going on in the industry, and then I get, you know, the question is, well, okay, Howard, why is that important? It's important because as an agent, you need to know what you're up against. You need to really know how important, for example, it is that you get back to a lead ASAP because there are going to be 12 other eight or 11 other agents that have a chance to communicate with that consumer, Right. We need, on our end, as technology providers, we need to build better technology that keeps you guys, the agents and brokers, closer to these leads, warmer, closer to the leads, um, so you have that competitive advantage. We need to stay in touch with leads in the short term, mid term, long term. We need to be hyper focused on lead quality. We need to be focused on getting as much information as possible. I mean, I've never believed in just capturing an email. If you want to, you know, if you want to produce tons and tons of leads, you can just capture an email. But we really need a phone number. You need a place where you can call them, a place you can text them. Um, you want to really know where they were, where were they searching from, get their IP address. We're really entering the world, and this is something that I'm really focused on now going forward, really entering the world of big data, um, You know, creating what we call a perfect audience, where we're not just getting phone number and email and name. We're really learning as much about this lead as possible where they're visiting, what types of homes they're looking at, and we'll be able to actually, I mean, it's a little bit, again, scary, a little big brother, we'll be able to follow them wherever they go on the Internet and broadcast the right types of homes that they might be interested, that we already know they're interested in. I mean, we ultimately want to know, you know, where someone lives, where they work, how much they make, when they're moving. We want to know as much about them, and that's the road that, that this industry is, is, is heading down. Um, so I think that at some point, there is, you know, uh, there is going to be a, uh, a problem. I just think that, again, this is like global warming, if you believe in that. This, this problem is growing geometrically, and no one else is really talking about it. And at some point, I think agents and brokers should be very fairly fed up with it, and I think something's going to happen. Um, because the consumer shouldn't be sold 12 times. It's just not – it's just – sort of not right, and at least really leads to ultimately very, very poor, you know, lead quality. Right. Wow. So, Howard, that's a ton, <laughs> that's a ton of stuff. Okay, so so let's go way, way back. Um, so, and I, and, um, I want to talk about, you know, so when you started Tiger Leads, right, back in 2007, people were doing all that crazy stuff, uh, you know, billboards, shopping carts, park or bus benches, mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff. You spend money on that kind of marketing, and there's no way to track no way to track your ROI on those kinds of things. And still, I will tell you, most people aren't tracking anything anyway, which is terrible, right? And everybody needs to start tracking everything so you actually know what's working. You know, you, you need to get down to the cost per lead, cost per sale. People are not doing that. When you went out there and said, hey, listen, guys, I can put together a spreadsheet, right, through my Tiger Lease thing, and I can tell you, you know, through this kind of marketing, to the penny, what your return is. How important was, was f for the group that you're talking to, how important was that? I'm, I'm just curious for me, because this goes back to tracking. Yeah, so, you know, what we used to do um, back, back in the day, we used to actually do an internet marketing test. I mean, you know, it was kind of fun, you know, an exciting time, so it was a total startup. We were doing something very new. Um, you know, uh, we've got a, obviously a huge sales staff now. We're, we're part of Move, and they've got a huge sales staff. But, but back then, it was, you know, me, myself, and I selling, right? And I had to get very creative about convincing people to do something completely new that no one else they knew, you know, was doing. Yeah. So I, I always put myself in the other person's shoes, right? I always said to myself, okay, I, I'm, let me make believe that I am them. I am an agent. And here is Howard trying to, to sell me on this new technology and this new lead gen platform. What do I want to know? What do I want to hear? Well, I want to see the real numbers, right? So we used to really roll up our sleeves. And prior to them ever even becoming a client, we used to do a, a, a we called a PPC or pay-per-click marketing test. And we'd literally go out, we spend, you know, a few hundred dollars, and we would run a, a real live marketing test. And then I could come back and sit with the client and say, okay, 
you know, your market is Honolulu, Hawaii. And you know what? Le the, the leads are really expensive here. Here's the national average. Here's kind of what the leads are here because you've got really, really high-end homes, so your CPL or your cost per lead is pretty high. And I would take them through the math. I'd say, you know, here's how many visitors we got, right? So we got 1,000 visitors, right, when we spent, you know, X hundred dollars. And then we got 10% of those visitors to actually register and give us all that information we wanted and register to use the site. So now we've got 100 leads, okay? And we've got 100 leads, and you spent, you know, let's say 1000 bucks, and so now you're at $10 CPL, $10 per lead. Now we can create a spreadsheet. I'd roll up my sleeves. We'd literally use like a go-to-meeting technology, and we'd create a spreadsheet live. We'd put the numbers in and we'd say, okay, give me your median price point there, okay? Give me your median price point in the home. Put that in. Here's your CPL. Here's a – Maybe let's, let's just create a budget for you going forward. That means we're going to create 100 leads a month. Now, you know, what do you think? What percentage of these leads that you're engaged with that you have this competitive advantage and you know exactly what you're doing, do you think you can close? Do you think you can close two or three of these 100 a month? Okay, let's put in 2.5% you know, conversion rate. And we would literally just show them, okay, if you do that, if you could just close two to three of these leads of these 100 a month, here's exactly what you're going to make, less what you spent, over, you know, over what you spent, and that's your ROI, right? That's your return on internet market. And you can't, they couldn't do that calculation with anything else. And, you know, lo and behold, these folks, you know, they saw it, they liked it, they believed it, they started doing it. And as long as they had proper lead follow-up, I mean, that's, that was the secret. That these Tiger League clients were absolutely crushing it, especially since there were really no other competitors out there. Um, and, you know, we have clients that have 2,000 to 3,000% return on investment, literally. But the bottom line is, even if you have a 200% return on investment, you absolutely should be doing it, right? And if you can go out and you can do this with, you know, three other Tiger League type companies and set up three other hit squads, you've got one team working the Tiger Leads and one team's working the company Y Leads and one team's working the company Z Leads, great. You know, if you're getting a 200% ROI with us and a 158% ROI with them and a 300% ROI with someone else, do it all, right? As long as you have the proper teams in place. Now, now, that is the kind of the, be the next big leap, okay, making sure that our clients have had and have the proper lead follow-up, which means having the right person in the right position saying the right things at the right time. I call it the four R's. And if you're spending money on lead gen, you've got to wake up every day saying, do I have the four R's? Now, the, now the four R's may be answered by yourself. You may be a solo agent and you're licensing Tiger yourself or something, some other platform yourself. That's okay. But are you the right person in the right position saying the right things at the right time? If not, you have to get someone else. And what that means is, is that when that lead comes in, you're on the phone right away, you're emailing right away, okay, and you're right there in the right position to respond right away, and you're doing the right things, which means you're not selling. You are absolutely not selling. Think of yourself as a concierge, as a customer service rep, you are giving them as much information as possible. You're not asking for anything. You're just basically engaging in a conversation, and you're trying to help them. You're helping them use the search site. You're saying, hey, you know, I noticed you're searching in these towns. Is this the right thing? Is this too many towns? Is it too few towns? Are you getting the, the, the proper MLS alerts? Maybe we need to broaden your search, narrow your search, so, so you can get the right information. It's all about that. You're constantly helping them, helping them, helping them, helping them. And then, you know what? Even if they actually thought they were working with another realtor, after you've been sort of just giving them lots of information for a few weeks or a month, they're going to realize they want to work with you. Yeah. And you never had to tell them. You never had to tell them about your track record. You were just there to literally help with their, with their home search. So there's a huge amount of uh, teaching that we do. We, I think we've pride ourselves in not just being a tech, you know, tech company saying, here you go, here's all this cool tech, and here's, here's all, this, you know, all, all these great leads, sink or swim. We could have done that, right? Yeah. Survival of the fittest. But but we took great pride in you know um, in, in always teaching you know twenty four seven customer support, tons of training videos. We just finished uh, a month ago our Tiger Lead Success Summit, where every single uh, Tiger Lead licensee and their team are invited um, to Las Vegas, and we did two days straight of of success secrets, tips, strategies, advice. I mean, people walk away with that with pages and pages of notes. And you could, you could sub out Tiger and sub in any other system, and all of those teachings work. It's all about 
properly follow up, proper team structure. I mean, we go into really all the details. And honestly, that's, that's the most fun part of, uh, you know, of my job. Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. So let's go back and um, I want to hit all the right points in the time that we have. So going back to that ROI. So you can, you can show me, you can illustrate to me, Howard, where, you know, a machine that I put in $10, I feed the machine $10 and I get $13 back or I get $20 back, right? You know, I, I put $10 in and I get $50 back. <clears throat> so that's, you know, that's, that's, you can illustrate sort of a cash on cash return. And, and right. we, here's but what Hold on. Yeah, but the, the number one variable that you can't control for, because, because I've had, you know, two clients in the same exact geographic market with the same exact marketing budget using the same exact system, right? Every variable is the same for these two agents, okay? Except one's got a, you know, 600% ROI, and the other one's struggling at a 60% ROI. Why is that? The only variable we can't that we can't completely control for again is the lead follow up process content you know communication communication strategy. That's why it's so important to us to teach that and spread the best practices of our best performers. Right, and and here's where I want to get to. I, I want to talk about about quality of leads. So so if I if I finish out my thought that I, earlier, right? So you can illustrate a cash on cash. Uh, cash on cash return but the other thing is yeah, right, I, call, I call it R -O -R -O -R -O -I -M -I, return on internet marketing investment okay but what about an IRR right so your internal rate of return so if I put ten dollars in and I get thirteen dollars back by Friday uh, that is one internal rate of return if I put ten dollars in and I get thirteen dollars back 12 months from now that's a whole different it's a whole different thing it's a whole different lens to, to look at now i bring that up because you know you mentioned twice earlier you said you know you people don't know or they have to know what kind of leads are out there you talk about lead quality here's what i'm hearing howard and i and i want you to talk to this the one of the big things that people are doing right now for web leads is you know these home valuation sites now you can put one of those up you can drive traffic there however you want to do it but those leads are very, very long-term leads. I, I talked to Buddy Blake. I don't know if you know who that guy is or not, if you've heard that name. Yeah, I know, I know Buddy Blake. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Buddy, Buddy came on the show and he said, hey man, I'm getting, I get about 1,000 leads a month, but some of these leads I will convert 60 months, five years from now. He said they're very long-term leads. So, so in terms of, you know, in terms of lead quality, you were talking, you, uh, you were talking earlier through one lens, right? You need to have their email, their phone number, and their IP address. You know, <clears throat> talk to us about lead quality and 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 the type of leads, web leads, online leads that are out there. Sure, no, that's, that's very perceptive. It's um, you know, I use IRR analysis for my own investments, right? Right. Um, I, I, you know, a lot of people don't, but I do. But that is how I calibrate one investment versus another. And it's a very interesting way to calibrate, you know, the, the investment in one marketing source versus another because that time uh, factor is very, very important. Yep. Um, you know, just generally speaking, uh, there are really three types, before we talk about lead quality, there are really three types of leads out there in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, there are the what I call sort of the cultivation leads, right? And this was the this was the the, the typical lead that Tiger Lead started out with, and Tiger Lead produced for a long period of time. And these were typically buyer leads. I mean, for the most part, maybe we found about 88 percent buyer leads, twelve percent seller leads. These are folks that were using the the home search site. Eighty eight percent of them were, were 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 saying, "Hey, we're just beginning our home search." And I want to start looking at, at homes, and I want to start getting MLS alerts. And, yes, they could be six months out. They could be 36 months out, right? So they're kind of these cultivation leads. Now, what we found was 12% of them also need to sell a home, and 12% of them were actually using the home search site to help create a valuation of their own home. Um, but before that, though, what we have developed over the last few years is what we call hand raiser leads. Hmm. These are leads who have a much shorter time frame. These are leads who are actually, for example, looking for an agent. Now, they might be a buyer. They might be a seller. But they're literally online right now raising their hand and saying, I want to talk to an agent right now. Now, maybe someone who's just searching for the best realtor in Charlotte, or maybe someone that's on a portal who's looking at a specific home in Charlotte and says, oh, I want to talk to an agent about that home right now. Either way, these are great leads. They're short-term leads, 
they don't engage as much with the home search technology. So you have to make, you know, you have to make hay with them right away or you're going to lose them. Um, the advantage of the sort of home search type leads, the leads that we've been producing since the beginning, and we, now we produce both types of these leads, the, the hand raisers and the home search leads, the advantage of the home search leads is they do very much use the technology. So you do have that big brother competitive advantage for as long as it's going to take for them to, to, to buy a home. And again, a lot of these people, you know, they have to sell a home before they buy a home. The third type of lead are these sort of long-term, lifetime relationship leads, right? Maybe the ones that, that Buddy Blake is talking about that are, in, in reality, all they're doing is going online and they're saying, hey, you know, by far, my biggest asset is my home, right? Yeah. By far, not even close. So I always want to know, what's the value of my, I want to know, I, I occasionally check my bank accounts. I occasionally check my stock portfolio, and I occasionally check the value of my biggest asset. And I think that's the problem because a lot of other companies out there are saying, hey, that's a lead, that's a seller lead. And I think that we know that's not really a seller lead. That's just someone just checking their bank account, right? Right. And okay. so, so, so I, I believe that there is value in these long-term leads, and I believe that, that, that we have to um, – we do have to stay in touch with our – our, our book of business and our leads for their lifetime and their friends and family for their lifetime. It's very important. And I, I always have my clients really think about, you know, am I making hay with the, the real short-term hand raises? Am I making hay with these cultivation leads staying in front of them so they work with me, not, not with my competition? And am I staying in touch with, with my entire database for the rest of their lives? If you're doing that, you're absolutely going to kill it. And your IRR is going to keep going up. I mean, you're just, you just, it's just going to be a rocket ship, right? But, but I totally agree that quality is, is, is the key thing. And that's why we're not so focused on these folks who say, you know what, I just wanted a, a value of my home. I'm not interested in selling, right? We, you can ask that question, right, and now have way fewer leads to produce like we do. Or you could, like my competitors, not ask that question because you just want to sell as many leads as possible. And that's why I go back to my complaint about the industry's producing too many leads. Got it. So very, 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 very perceptive uh, question, Toby. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Um, so, so, so those are the three kinds of leads. You know, so you know, w one thing that you've mentioned a few times in this is, you know, w with home search and with Tiger, you know, especially I, I don't know uh, today, but you know, early on with Tiger leads, you know, people loved it because the the home search experience was so good. Um, what can what can uh, you know, what was it that was so good? And, and what can agents that are listening, you know, they're out in the audience right now, what can they do to enhance that, that, that search experience for the consumer? Well, I, look, I, I think that, you know, what, what the tiger leads of the world do is we help level the playing field for the smaller brokers, you know, or the, you know, the agent teams that are, you know, three to five agents. Right. Okay. If you think about it, you know, the big boys, right? The big boys, the Zillows, the Trulias, the, you know, whoever, the, you know, Rheologies, you know, they've got millions of dollars to spend to create this really rich consumer experience, get as much traffic as possible. I mean, that, they have a budget that we can't even come close to. I'm say we, I'm talking about, you know, agents and brokers, right? Yeah. But, but we now can, you know, for a fairly nominal amount, we can now license this great technology from, let's say, a Tiger Lead or a whole host of any of my competitors, and now we can level the playing field. So my recommendation is to not, you know, spin your wheel, spend all this money, try to develop this for yourself. Go out, do your research, look at all the different consumer search experiences out there, and then license the one that's going to be, you know, that's going to be right for you. Your focus as an agent should not be on building technology. Your focus should not be on becoming an internet marketing expert. Your right. focus should not be on becoming a social media expert. Your focus should be on helping leads, speaking to leads ASAP, being super helpful, staying in touch, because that's the bottom line. Again, 50 to 60% of these leads don't ever get responded to, right? Yet everyone's running around just completely obsessed with lead numbers and, you know, and Facebook and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know what? If they spent one-tenth of that energy on actually pristine lead follow-up, they'd make a lot more money because the tech 
is out there, and it doesn't have to be Tiger. There's a whole host of great options out there now, right? The tech is out there. Look at it, shop it, get the one that's that, that's right for you. You do not you do not have to build it. Well, so yeah, yeah. I mean, so in terms of follow up, I mean, you know, we've heard that saying a bunch. You know, right? The fortunes and the follow up, and you know, I mean, there's there's a lot of little sayings around that. So earlier, you 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 told a story with about two agents, exactly the same metrics right? Exactly the same metrics, using all the same tools. One got a 600% return and the other got a 60% return. And, and obviously you were, I think you were pointing to the fact that, you know, the 600% or 600% just did a better job in follow-up. What does that look for? So, or, or I'm sorry, what does that look like? What does, what does perfect follow-up look like? And, and are you telling, I shouldn't ever wrap two questions in one, but I will. And, you know, and, uh, it's, and does Tiger, uh, have you created a system sort, to sort of automate that? Is that one of the features of Tiger Leads? Yeah, we, you know, look, we, we try to give you as much technology as possible to, to automate it, to make it, you know, to make it easy, to make the conversation easy, but we can't pick up the phone for you, right? right. One, of the, one of the paradoxes, right, that you have to think about in this industry is a lot of agents out there want everything to be automated. Yeah, right? yeah. And then the other thing is they just want sales to fall in their lap. And what I've been teaching from the beginning is if everything's automated, they don't need you, okay? You know, you have to make yourself important. Agents have to transition from being the gatekeepers of information to being the translators of information. Mm. Back in the day, if you wanted to search for homes, you had to go through an agent. They did your search for you. Now, all of the listings are out there, right? You can get access to an IDX data feed. You can do an MLS search on any number of sites. So you got all this information out there, but it's still overwhelming to the consumer. So we have to really think about as agents, we have to think about being the best translators of that information, right? They're almost, the consumer is almost overwhelmed with that information. We really have to help them, help them narrow down um, or expand or, or really whatever it is, right? And, you know, no one is ever going to disintermediate the good agent. They're always going to be incredibly important. It's by far the largest economic transaction in someone's life. There is incredible number of details, financial responsibility. I mean, that's the great thing. The agents are always going to be important. Now, uh, uh, brokerages, large brokerages, I'm not so sure, okay? Um, that's, a different, that's a different story. But agents are always going to be super important. In, in terms of, you know, what does good lead follow-up look like? Um, look, we produce now a, a huge number of what I, what I call these hand raiser leads. That could be someone who's on a portal, you know, they're looking at a home, they fill up a home, say, hey, I want to talk, I love that home, I love the way it looks, I want to talk to an agent about it right now, okay? Well, I guarantee you that listing agent is probably not going to call them. We know statistically they're not going to call them. So that gives you, a buyer's agent, an advantage if you speak to that lead right away. They don't know that you're a listing agent or a buyer's agent, that's the bottom line. You just basically say, hey, I, you know, I know you had a question about 124 Main Street. Hey, I just want to let you know that that home's been on the market for 44 days. Um, I've got a whole bunch of homes in that same neighborhood that I think you should, you know, that, that you should look at. You know, what are you really looking for? Get them talking. Uh, hey, you want to go see the home? Let's go see the home. Well, maybe that home is no longer on the market. Well, if that home is no longer on the market, it's not end of conversation. If that home is no longer on the market, say, hey, what are you really looking for? Let me set you up on a search that will start sending you homes that are on that are on the market get you a better database of homes not one of these databases that's you know got you know homes that haven't been on the market for a few months and let me help you let me help you see homes that really on the market that you really could look at and, and engage you in the conversation so it's got to be a right away conversation it's got to be filled with helpful information that really just think about yourself like i said like a like a, a, a very well-trained concierge and then you have to have a system in, pra in place. And whether that's you following the system or whether that's your team that's following the system, you basically really want to have, um, you know, metrics at hand. You want to make people who are following up on the leads for you accountable. You want to make everything that they do visible. So let's say you have a team of, you know, three buyer's agents, right? Yep. I mean, I could have that 600% ROI person and the 60% ROI person, and they each have, let's say, a team of three to five buyer agents. Why is one at 600? Why is one at 60? Basically, the leader of each of those teams is the CEO. They have to think about themselves as the CEO, okay? It is ultimately their responsibility whether their buyer's agents are converting, let's say, Tiger leads or not. 
So what that means is, is that the person who's running the 600% ROI team is absolutely every single week publicly showing the numbers of everyone on that team. <laughs> okay, they're saying, you know, and that's where we come in at Tiger. We can give them the tools. We can give them the performance data on every single buyer's agent that's working the team. How long did it take them to pick up the phone? How long did it take them to send an email? How many phone calls and emails were made, you know, per lead? All of these metrics, and they actually need to make this visible to everybody because the number one performer is going to bring up the tide for everyone else. Everyone else is going to see this number of performance. They're going to see their metrics, and they're going to be held accountable and responsible to hit those same types of numbers. So it's about having, I, I, I call, I, my, my expression is become a maverick, M-A-V, maverick, measurement, accountability, and visibility. Make people accountable. If they're not working their leads on time and they're not sending enough communications, cut their leads off. Don't keep, keep giving them leads. Right. If you have someone else on the team who's a star performer, give them more leads. Make them accountable, okay? And make everything that everyone's doing visible because when you get a superstar in there, and a superstar really is someone who's just tenacious, high sense of urgency, and they love getting on the phone and chatting, and they become the consumer's best friend, those numbers with other people who might be a little bit negative and say, well, I don't know if this lead just really works. When they see that star performing the team killing it and producing all these numbers, all of a sudden they, they get rid of all the negative thoughts like, oh, wait, they can do it. I can do it. And here's what needs to do. I love it. I love it. And look, and, if, if, yeah. and, and, and by the way, I think – you might have lost some people in the audience when you know when you were talking about hey when people are searching for one two three Main Street and then you reach out and say hey I know you're looking at one two three Main Street and here's some you know I want to tell you a little bit about it and that that is a feature that uh, that people can access through Tiger Leads because you said earlier that your agents know when people are online and looking at properties um, mechanically well, I'm sorry go ahead. Yeah we're, we're, yeah, we're producing all types of leads now. That's the cool thing. So, you know, in 2007, 2008, we only produced those home search leads. People were online and they wanted a great home search experience. They sort of want to be left alone for a little bit, right? They yeah. just want to be online and they, they, they want to daydream about homes or they want to search for homes. They kind of want to be left alone a little bit. But over time, you're the only one to be So you start building this rapport. You start getting them better information. You keep reaching out. I mean, I just talked to a great client of mine. Um, you know, Anthony Graham, he tells this great story about a professional football player. Anthony is, is and here's another thing that everybody should write down, and, and everyone in my flock writes this down. It's F as in Frank, S as in Sam, C as in Charlie, P as in Paul. F-S-C-P. Okay, great lead follow-up. It's fast, service-oriented, consistent, and persistent. Okay, and they all mean different things, right? But, but, but Anthony Graham is absolutely consistent in his approach, has a system in place, and he is persistent as can be. So he was reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. It wasn't until the 12th contact with this professional football player that the professional football player actually texted him back, okay? And Anthony was consistent. He's like, I'm going to phone, I'm going to email, I'm going to text. I'm going to phone, I'm going to email, I'm going to text, right? And it was a text that came back. And now, okay, this guy's been an amazing client. They bought a multi-million dollar house. They're building a multi they're, He's now helping him use... Uh, used Tony to find a multi-million dollar training facility. He just got a $60 million contract. He's going to be buying a bigger house. He's going to tell his other teammates about Anthony Graham. And that was just him deciding, you know what? I'm not going to quit at the fourth contact. I'm not going to quit at the seventh contact. I am going to be consistent and persistent, and I got him on the 12th contact. That's what separates, that's what separates the superstars from, you know, from everybody else. Now, getting back to your question, Toby, so those are kind of like the home search leads. We also produce a lot of these hand raiser leads, which actually come to us in different flavors. So literally, if somebody is in your market and they're online and they're not even interested in looking at a home search site, they might be online literally looking for a realtor or looking for you know, an agent. And they're online right now saying, you know, who's the best realtor in Richmond, Virginia, right? So we are now putting that mousetrap out to find those people. They're great leads. They're amazing leads. And they're a mixture of buyers and a strong mixture of, of sellers as well. Again, we're also finding people who have specific questions about specific homes. Again, they don't really care about the home search site right away. We want to get them on that eventually. But right now, they just want to talk to you about that home, and they may want to go see that home right away. Again, that, that fast follow-up is critical for, for the hand raiser type leads. You can get away with it, you know, and you can make up for it over time on the home search type leads if you're not a lightning fast because you have this technology that binds you to them, but you'll get creamed 
on the on the short term hand raiser leads if you're not immediately on the phone in the first few minutes. Yeah, right. So I love that. So how look. You know, how do you uh, here's what people struggle with. And look, technologists struggle with this. Right. So uh, on one side of the fence, you want to reduce the friction. Right. You want to get this guy's email address, his cell phone. Right? You want to get all of his information that you can. But but, you know, when they come through the gate, you can't you know, if you have all that friction, all those hoops they have to jump through to even engage with you or your site, they're just going to bounce off of it and move on where there's less friction. How are you? Uh, look. That football player, if I had that guy's uh, 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 cell phone and I could text him, I'd be all over that. Because how many texts have you not opened? None, right? Absolutely. You uh, opened- absolutely. I, mean, I, I tell people, I tell my business associates and I tell my clients, if you email me, there is a significant chance I will never see your email. Yep. Because I'm getting 500, 600 emails a day. But I said, if you really need to get to me, if you need to get to Howard Tager, text me because I never miss a text. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. I mean, that is the golden thing that you can get. How does how do you get that? I mean, and again, if, I'm, if, it's, if there's secret sauce here, I mean, don't obviously don't tell me. But you, you know, it's, we 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 basically in the lead capture process, um, we are you know it's a value position, right? Um, you know, why as a consumer would I possibly give you my cell phone? Well, I might give you my cell phone if I just inherited a property and need to sell it <laughs> and I want to talk to an agent right away. Yeah. Okay. Or if I think you're the best agent in town. Right. I might give you my cell phone if I see a home on a portal and I love this home and I want to go see it right away. I might give you my cell phone. You've got to think about, you know, without sort of obviously yeah, giving you all the secret sources, you've got to think about that value proposition. And you're never going to get 100% of the people to give you their, their cell phones. But out of 1,000 people, if, you know, 1,000 visitors, if you can create 100 high-quality leads, which consists of name and cell phone and email and all that good stuff, and you only have, like, 15% bad numbers, you're in business. You know, it's a numbers game. Lead gen is a numbers game, okay? You get, you know, one of 100 leads that gave you the wrong number. Okay, communicate with them via email. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients who said, you know what, they gave us a bad number, we stayed in touch, we, we were sending them the right types of MLS alerts, and you know what, over time, they gave us their real cell phone. So, you, you, so, you know, you, you, you never give up. But we absolutely focus on getting the phone numbers. So listen, I'm just going to ask you, we're already at kind of at our time limit, so I, you know, I'm going to ask you one last question, uh, and if you don't want to answer it, I'll ask you one other one, and then I just, I'm going to get a book recommendation for you. But <clears throat> I've talked to Greer Allen. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that are, are you know, either directly your competitors or you know, they're adjacent to, to your business, um, who I have not had on the show and who I believe are very, very smart guys are the smart zip guys. And you know, if I was going to throw money at something, before talking to you, Howard, I was thinking that that's that's the platform that that I you know I might throw money at. Um, I I love what what I'm hearing. I, I love the, the how you are viewing this process. Um, you know what is something that that uh, you know what, what's I mean, t- what is a question that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Maybe maybe I, I, that's not the question I was going to ask, but let me ask it that way. What what would you like to communicate? <laughs> I was bracing myself for a really tough, controversial question. I was excited for it. I don't shy away from controversy. No, I know. Um, and I really was going to ask you, uh, I was going to ask you about smart zip, but I just, you know, w- w- again, what did I miss here in terms of understanding? I, 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 you mentioned, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned Greer Allen. He's a great guy. Uh, I know Greer. Um, he, um, there are competitors that I've had over the years who have been, uh, less than ethical <laughs> um, and uh, not focused on quality and, and don't have the same, you know, business, business ethics that, that we have at Tiger Lube. Um, Greer, Greer Allen is, is one of the great guys in the industry. I can't say enough uh, good things about him. Um, you know, I, I don't like to talk specifically uh, about, um, you know, other competitors. What, what I would recommend to folks is number one, um, you know, obviously do your research. Um, there's just, I cannot tell you the number of clients I've had who have been preyed upon by other, by other competitors 
and just sold a false bill of goods. And remember that old expression that you heard when you were a kid, if it's too good to be true, it is, right? right? Yep. Um, and they end up spending a bunch of money, they go down a path, and then they come back, and they say, you know what, I was a real waste of money, I just love Tiger, I should have stayed with Tiger, that kind of thing, right? So you really gotta do your research. And what that means is you've got to not talk to the folks that they're telling you to talk to, you've gotta find out who's using that system and, and not the people they're telling you to refer, but they're referring you to. Find out who's in that system and talk to them, okay? Um, it's just going to give you basically plans, people that, you know, are, are right. you know, sort of incentivized to tell you the right thing. Yeah. Um, you really want to talk to as many people as possible. And the other thing is I, I believe that, that, you know, real estate technology companies like ourselves, you really got to put your money where your mouth is, okay? There's so many companies out there that require you to sign on for like 12 months. And I just don't know why. You know, I mean, if you've got a great system, if you're proud of your system, if you're going to produce a lot of hay for the agents and brokers, don't make them sign up for 12 months. To me, if you make them sign up for 12 months, that means you don't believe in your own system. Yep. You know, if the system's not working for someone, let them get out. Let them get out and let them get out in short order. So anyone at Tiger from the history of Tiger could give a 60 days notice and they're done. They're out. Because we've always, always believed in our system. And that makes, you know, I preach accountability to agents. Well, that makes us accountable, you know, as well. Yeah, you know, I would. You know what I would love to see from you or or whoever. And I don't know if it's possible, but I would love to see sort of a freemium offering from you guys, right? Where you know some of this, I get something for free, and then you know, and if it provides value, then I can level up and you know go a little bit deeper. Why don't you know this? You know, this is the your whole. Why don't you guys offer a freemium product? Well, there's freemium, most freemium products are commoditized products where there really is not a large marginal cost. So for example, if I license, you know, uh, you know, go to meeting technology to you or join me technology to you, or I license some, you know, basically just online software you're going to download and I don't have really any sales support, customer right. support, it's all automated. Yeah. I download it to you. I'll give it to you for two months as a freemium and then all kinds of things you can upgrade to or then go pay. We spend so much time. I mean, just to get a client on board, we've got to go and set up a three-way contract client, the MLS board, so we can get the IDX data feed, um, you know, uh, as well as their brokerage. Um, we have to do programming. Um, we're doing, you know, we're, we're very much a, like, high-end, high-touch. Um, we're on the, on the other end of the spectrum, right? Um, we're doing all of this customer training and support. Um, there's just a high cost to what we do. So, so, number one, it would put us out of business if we had a free program. Number two is, you know, you really have to have a little skin in the game, right? Yeah. You really got to have a little bit of money in the game um, so that you do what, again, I keep harping on, what's critical is that we follow up. If you have something for free, you don't have a huge incentive because you're, you're torn in so many different directions. You're, 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 you're just running out of time. You have so many different things you have to do, and the last thing you want to do is go, you know, send out a 1,000 emails and a 1,000 texts and a 1,000 calls. You're just not going to do it you've got a thousand bucks in the game, you're absolutely going to do it, yep. right? Because you don't want to watch that, you know, you know, uh, flush that money down the toilet. I agree, man. I totally agree with that. Hey, <laughs> Howard, thanks for coming on the show, man. I, 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 I it was, I, man. I loved your energy. I, 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 think people. Hopefully, people are gonna get great value out of this, even if they don't use Tiger. I love the way. I mean, I really do love that you didn't. You did. You know, this is not a commercial for Tiger Leads. I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to meet you, um, and uh, I love that. You know, when you said, "Hey, you know," when you were talking about this, you know, this type of service, you said you could use Tiger or somebody else. So I appreciate you you being as objective as you can. And what I will do, if you want to, you know, we create. Uh, uh, some show notes for this and I'm sure people are going to be curious about what it costs and blah 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 so if you wanted to send me something I, you know, with pricing or, or something like that where people can get a little deeper understanding I'm happy to throw that on the show notes so uh, here's my last question Absolutely. And, and I would tell people you know um, to go to tigerlead.com um, check out our blog check out the presentations that we're putting online we, you know, we're posting that every day the video uh, presentations from our Tiger Lead Summit and again I don't care if you use Tiger or if you use another system. Everything you're going to watch on this, on this blog is going to help you in your business. And uh, I, I'm just a big believer in that. If we give back to the community, if we help everyone, no matter if they use our system or not, it's going to come back around to us. I love it. I, look, I, that's, this show is free for everybody. So, you know, I, I believe that too. Hey, so here's my last question. I ask it of everybody, and it's this. If, you know, I'm an aspiring agent out there. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? <laughs> Twenty-five bucks. What? 
you know, I think, I, 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 boy, that's a, that's, a, that's a great one. Um, for for twenty four ninety five, you can get Chris Smith's People Work. I love that book. I think it's a great. I think it's a great. Uh, it's really how to build a people business, um, and I think it's just an awesome, uh, just an awesome read. Um, so there you go. You'd, you'd have you'd have you'd have a nickel left. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, with uh, Austin Allison, right? Yeah, Austin Allison, Chris Smith. It's called People Work. I need to read that. I haven't read it yet. So, hey, if anybody, hopefully that's on Audible. If you know, if it is on Audible, uh, everybody, you can get a free copy of that. Just go to yeah. Audible. Aud- absolutely, absolutely audible. There you go. Get a free copy. Go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive and uh, get a free copy of that book. Hey, Howard, thanks again, man. I, again, it was great meeting you. Thanks for coming on the show. And uh, um, I, I wish you nothing but success with Tiger Leads. And, and I, I'm so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I love to see, you know, real entrepreneurs, tech entrepreneurs that are inside the industry building stuff for the industry. So I appreciate it, bud. Toby, I really appreciate you having me on. It was an honor to be on the show, and uh, uh, hopefully that uh, there was some value out there to the to your audience. Thanks, thanks so much. You got it. All right, talk to you soon. Cheers, Pat. Let's go. Yeah.